Hi, this is Matt at AppWorks, and this video is going to be about user privileges and security in FileMaker, which is a pretty important topic, and in becoming more important, the more time um, goes by and the more we have new versions of FileMaker, and they really tighten up the security in the platform. So this is mostly controlled inside the Manage Security dialog. There's a couple of other areas we'll look at in a minute, but this is really the main part of it. And in here, in FileMaker, now you get this basic screen, which just gives you all of your users, and there's a button at the bottom for advanced settings. So if you're going to create another user in a group, uh, for example, you have another user like, I don't know, um, I don't know, how about Todd Moonshine? We would duplicate a user and then give him a different name and then set a password. A really good practice, by the way, and I'm going to be mixing some best practices in with uh, some basic security features, is to always require the password change. So to set, never use a, never use a default password of nothing. Always have something in there. Like uh, it could be just something pretty basic, like new password or please reset me or something like that. That you that is unique to you and your organization that you assign for all users. And the reason this is a good idea is when you come back into this dialog box, you can quickly see who's actually logged in and set their password and who has not. So Mary's password is set because this box is not checked, but Todd's um, has not set his password because as soon as Todd sets his password, this checkbox automatically goes away. Okay. Another really important thing I want to talk about here is the privilege sets. So you can see some different ones here, and FileMaker gives you a few choices built in. All the ones that are in the square brackets, these three, full access, data entry only, and read only access are all come with the platform, and then you can choose other ones as you want. Uh, here's, where, here's a really good best practice. Never, ever use data entry only or read only access. They're very restricted, and they're just gonna paint you into a corner and cause problems. Um, so there's really no reason, in my opinion, to ever use those two. And what I do instead uh, is this. I go into advanced settings. And if, let's say if I want a group of users who only I want them to be able to read only, um, have read only access to the database. What I would do is actually click this data entry or the read only group, I mean, and click duplicate. And then call this real read only or something else. Um, because probably in your system, you'll have a log table or some one table like a globals table or something that the user actually really need to be able to read. And in that situation, it's not really a read-only user. They have right access to one small bit of your system. And then there may be other parts of your system that you don't want to have any access at all. But these three privilege sets um, in brackets have no customization at all. They are what they are and you cannot modify them. Um, the full access one is required and that's what all of your developer level users will use. But the other two I would just uh, use as a starting point, but never actually use. Okay, I have a couple of groups I've set up. We're going to be looking at the one called Regular User. And so if I click on that one, I'll click Edit. And this is where you have several important things. So um, we're going to get into custom privileges here in a second, because this is really where it gets interesting. But first of all, you, what you should do is you should set what platforms the user is going to come in as. So, for example, if users in this group are going to be getting to your database from FileMaker Pro or Go, but not WebDirect, then don't click this box for WebDirect. And if they're WebDirect only, then you can click the box for WebDirect here, but uncheck these two. The reauthentication. Um, uh, works also with a custom privilege, which we're not really going to cover that right now. But that's um, kind of a special thing to uh, that requires a user to re-log in after a certain number of minutes of idle time. A couple of other things that we have over here are we have these checkboxes that, that go with the privilege set to allow certain features like printing, exporting, um, etc. And those are really important to think of as well. And some other ones that can sometimes be gotchas are um, sometimes I forget to allow users to modify their password. So if I did this and then Todd tried to log in, um, he would not be able to set his password because even though I said, hey, Todd, you have to change your password, um, I went into the privilege set and I said, yeah, but the privilege set members cannot. So that one definitely trips me up from time to time. So you should be aware of that. Um, here's another little best practice tip. Um, don't, don't really require users to change their password but do instead have like a minimum length. 
And if you do a little bit of research on this, as I've done, you'll find that changing your password doesn't really give you extra security because what you, people do is they just come up with a, a really dumb password like password one. And then in 90 days when they have to change it, they change it password two, password three, password four. That's not security at all. What is security is a really long password. So 12 characters, eight characters, 20 characters. Pick, pick what's comfortable for you, but it should be a really long number uh, of, of characters. The longer the better. Okay. Uh, available menu commands. This is another important area. So if you want to restrict your user to do only certain things, then you can turn off uh, a lot of menu commands, which is really nice in one fell swoop, without having to use custom menus. So I actually have another copy of FileMaker open um, that I'm going to test in a second um, for this user. So let's actually take a quick look, and then I'm going to come back here because I really want to show you what happens down deep in this uh, record level privileges, because this is really where the important and fun things happen. Okay, so this other copy of FileMaker looks pretty much the same, except in this copy I actually have some record level security. So if I said show all records, there's some records that come up with no access at all. But if I go to my copy, the, the when I'm logged in as a developer and say show all records, I can see everything. Um, so I can scroll to the top, and you can see so like what, what the records would look like that they can't see. So they can see this first one, but there's a whole bunch they can't. So why is that? Um, so if I click on this first record in both systems, I can see um, that I can see the name of the people. These are all the other ones in, in the found set because I'm using a self-join relationship. But if I go to more, I can see that um, the person who edited the record is, or created the record, is Mary Sunshine, and I'm logged in as Mary Sunshine over here on the right. If I go to the next record down, this says no access, and this one says, oh, the creator is blank. I don't actually know who the creator was. Um, so because of that, I, it was like an imported record, for example. Um, so Mary didn't create the record. Mary can't see the record. How do we set that? Let's look. Um, so back in the development version, I'm going to go into Manage Database. Um, sorry, not Managed Database, Managed Security. Um, and notice that if I go to my other copy of FileMaker, I can't even get to that choice. So Managed Security is just turned off for that user in that privilege set. So now I'm going to go into this Advanced Settings area down at the bottom. And uh, we saw these really briefly where I saw the different users. And I'm going to go into Regular User, click on Edit, and now we're going to go down the rabbit hole. So custom privileges, click on that, and you, you just choose it again from the menu. And this shows me all of my tables. And the table that we're looking at right now is company. So I click this again, click limited, and choose it. So we're a few d dialogues deep into the security structure. And this is where I can see a user can only see a record in this table if the account name is the name of the creator. So in other words, if I'm logged on as Mary Sunshine, and I created the record, then I can see the record. Um, FileMaker also will allow me to create a record, and I can see it. I can create a record, but then it's automatically setting my name as the creator, so I can do that. So let's just leave this here for a second. If I go back over to the other system and click Create, I can um, go in here and actually um, list the record. So I can say, I don't know, um, AppWorks Training. Something like that and maybe spell it correctly. Um, so if I changed uh, a privilege uh, right now, uh, it would actually happen directly. So if I, if I said, oh, I'm going to actually give Mary access to everything, as soon as I save this, click, 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 it should actually immediately apply. And just like that, Mary can see the records. I'm going to go back and change it back. Security, we got to go down in, advanced. Regular user, edit, custom, company, create is limited. Sorry, view is limited. And then it remembers my calculation, which is great. And I just click OK. Then OK, two, three, four clicks box later. And now those changes are immediately affected on the other copy of FileMaker. You might be thinking, and I'm certainly thinking, that it's really not a very good user um, experience to see all of these no-access lines 
Um, the way around that is this. If you don't let the user go from the dashboard directly to just look at all the customers, but you have a query, you have a search, if the user has to say, I want to do a find for a record, or you have a script that does this and just show you all the records that you can see, then they only see the ones that they can see. So basically what you want to do is you want to take away the ability for them to get show all. Just take that off of their system. One way you can do that is, we're going to go back to the same area here in a second, is security, advanced, advanced user, sorry, regular user, edit. And then we're going to just change the available menu commands to editing only, which will take away certain things from the menu, not only from the menus, but it takes them away from the interface. So now they don't get show all anymore. It's just gone. Unfortunately, they also don't get <laughs> new record or find, and those are things we really probably want. So in that particular case, we're probably going to need to put some uh, buttons in the interface that do commands that we want the user to do. Okay, I'm going to talk about one other area here, which is um, another dialog. Let's go back to the full access version. And if I go into manage and I see security, there's another area where there's some security things that happen, and that's in sharing. And if I go to sharing, and I say share with FileMaker clients, this brings up a different dialog box and says that users who see this file as a FileMaker Pro user, I can specify only certain privilege sets to get in. So for FileMaker clients, I only want them to be able to be either regular or advanced users um, or full access users. Here's a great tip for you. If you want a WebDirect solution on your system, you probably, I would recommend that you wouldn't want any full access users to ever log onto the database via WebDirect because you're just kind of opening yourself to the world uh, for people who, because there's no features for full access. You can't get to layout mode with WebDirect. Um, you can't get to the graph. There's, a, there's really not a, a, a good reason, I think, to have full access users um, using WebDirect. So here's how you can change that. And right next to the other menu, if you go back to sharing and you say configure for WebDirect, in the WebDirect version, you can actually click on specify here and then say the users cannot log on with full access, but they can if they're in the WebDirect set. And then in the WebDirect set, we can um, go back to manage security and we can take a look at uh, a user who might be in that set. So for example, if I say training and make the training user as part of my WebDirect set, um, then I can kind of see exactly what the WebDirect user can do and choose all the same exact features just like we saw for a user that was connecting with FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Go client. That's kind of a good whirlwind tour of a lot of the features in security in FileMaker. Um, there will be more details coming up, but those are some important things that you should know. Have a great day, and thanks for watching this video.